Hey there everybody, thanks for joining me for another One Man Review. Today I'll be continuing on with my lengthy project of reading the entire Dragon Ball Z one volume at a time. Uh, I started this when Akira Toriyama passed. I never read Dragon Ball or any of Toriyama's work because I had this pre-bias against what Dragon Ball Z was just based on my students. Um, you know, learning more about him after he passed sadly made me more interested and I had this around because uh, my stepson Jack likes it. Uh, I've never read Dragon Ball. I understand that I would probably enjoy Toriyama's other work more, but I'm committed to reading Dragon Ball. I uh, enjoyed the first three volumes, so we'll continue on here with volume four. Volume four is like my least favorite so far, but we'll go through and kind of point out what I did and didn't like. Um, I, I know from seeing the omnibus collections that Jack has, we've got him a couple of those. This was the big box set that we got for him when he's he's visiting us here. Um, I know that they have those with color sections printed in color. It's always a bummer to see manga when the, the color's printed in black and white because it just, like, the contrast isn't right and it gets all muddy like this. So that's something that's a bit of a bummer. Uh, this volume definitely leans into the reason I never dipped into Dragon Ball, where to me it starts to feel like kids playing a game of like, I shot you with a laser, I have a force field, I have a laser bursting force field, my force field has a special mirror on it that reflects your laser, that kind of thing that kids do. Um, that hadn't been as present in the first three volumes there was more really interesting like stakes upping that I noted when I when I looked at that that the stakes kept getting more and more intense. In this volume, it's basically just one gigantic long fight scene between uh, Goku and Vegeta and the, like Goku's friends and helpers. But you get stuff like this where he's like already done the Kaioken to increase his power, and then he does Kaioken times two and that's not enough and then he knows it's going to hurt his body but he does Kaiyu Kid times three and um, all of those big stakes that Toriyama built up in the first three start to lose the sense of like interest for me when you realize they don't really matter because you can always just like power up one more time past what you thought was possible. There's also some like silly explanations of things that are just kind of face palmy to me. Moonlight is only sun reflected, but only when reflected by the moon does it contain green spectrum radiation. When the moon is full, that radiation exceeds 17 million xeno per second. And when we absorb that, the full amount through our eyes, then the Saiyan reaction is set off in the glands in our tail and transformation begins. Like just this, this, uh, this is what, when I've seen the cartoon, I feel like it's just guys standing on... Uh, like out in canyons full of dirt, like posing and shouting at each other and explaining their powers to each other. And that's a lot of what's going on in this. The greatest Saiyans can compress the planet's atmosphere with a powerball to create a small artificial moon that reflects 17 million Xeno. And this is the kind of stuff that like when I have students, uh, when I was a substitute teacher, I mean, anytime I, I deal with kids that have a bunch of characters that look like Dragon Ball Z. This is the kind of thing that they do. Uh, you ask them to tell you about their idea and instead of like being able to give the quick elevator pitch or be able to tell you like the emotional theme that they're going for, they just start lotting on all of these details about like these mechanisms, these imaginary mechanisms. Um, and, and that's really, you know, where I get off board with that. I just don't have any patience for that. I don't find it interesting. And, uh, you know, I've been wondering in the first three volumes, there was very much this ethic in the work itself about becoming the best version of yourself through hard work. Um, and I feel like some of that, I was wondering why do so many of the students that like this stuff tend to be the ones that don't want to work hard, that want to look for the way out. They just want to copy a drawing. They don't want to do it on their own. They don't want to create their own character, you know. They just want to draw the Dragon Ball Z. That's very standard for a lot of my students, or at least the one. There's a certain type that only draws Dragon Ball Z stuff, and I, I'm starting to get it more in this volume why that is because they're getting caught up in all of this type of stuff, and they're they're just missing that other thing. And I'll, I'll be curious to see if that other kind of ethic. 
comes through in the later volumes again, or if that kind of gets lost as Toriyama just appeals to what is popular in the crowd. There's definitely some drawing in here that I'm not a huge fan of as well. Uh, like this ape creature I don't think is very well done. The very strange cartooning here, I feel like uh, Kobayashi, the, I think that's his name, the guy that does Michael the Cat, this is kind of a face that he would do, but he'd do it better. Uh, it's very obvious to me that Toriyama is meant for this type of like short squat cartoony character. Um, I was saying it in the earlier volumes. I just don't really like the way that he draws big muscle guys. I don't think he's very good at it. And uh, it's it's it really makes me want to go see the rest of his work where he's more of a cartoonist and less, less of an action hero guy. There are moments, and I've been saying this throughout, when he's drawing like energy and explosions, I think he is really, really good at that. And that allows him to get away with not being as good at as drawing the pose, the action poses and the muscly anatomy and things. There's also just some really fun images like this one where there's like heavy distortion put on the figure, big ab abstraction uh, put with the effects. So when you see the cartooning chops combined with his chops and creating effects, it makes for very, very impactful images. But when you go back to just like, you know, the, the buff guys, they feel kind of stiff to me. I, I feel like his short squat people actually wind up more dynamic than the, the action figures. And then like the humor, the humor comes through in certain spots. So just having like uh, Gohan here with his like little naked baby, butt with his tail no longer on there, those are like the funny moments. And from talking to Sean and Brandon and getting t to know more about like what makes Toriyama so special to people. I think it's definitely moments like that that make him a master. So uh, like those things are cracking me up. And some of these expressions I, I think are really nice as well. Again, like the combination of cartooning with like some effects, but just the silly little things like the little naked butt like really crack me up. Um, this Reading this really, really makes me appreciate what Toriyama does enough to want to read the stuff that's just not down this lane, because I think this lane isn't my thing, obviously. Um, but there was so much in the first three volumes that I did enjoy, and I know that kind of culminated in this big battle, and then there's going to have to be many other storylines, because I think there's like 24, 25 of these things to read. Uh, I'm very curious to see... Like, now I feel like I've got kind of one full, like, arc and come down, or we're coming to the come down. So I'm curious to see how he kind of keeps those arcs going, um, how he keeps upping the stakes, and if that's done as well as it was in the first volumes. Like, I can tolerate uh, one out of every four kind of being the big fight if there's, like, a really interesting build up to it. So I think that's what I'm most curious about moving forward with Dragon Ball Z in particular, but overall, I'm just really curious and going and reading all of the other stuff Toriyama has done be beyond Dragon Ball Z. So join me back. I don't give up. Uh, I will make it to the end. So join me back next week for volume five. <laughs>